Here we study the dynamics of uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion is the motion of an object traveling at a constant or uniform speed on a circular path. As an example of uniform circular motion, the figure shows a model or plane on a guideline. The speed of the plane is the magnitude of the velocity vector v, and since the speed is constant, the vectors in the drawing have the same magnitude at all points on the circle. One complete revolution of the airplane is equivalent to one circumference, and the time for one revolution is the period of the airplane. So the period can be represented by T, while circumference is C. So in a circle, the formula to compute for circumference is 2 pi r. Given these equations or quantities, we can compute the velocity or speed of the airplane is in a circular path using the formula for motion in which that is x divided by t or distance divided by time. So since the distance here is equivalent to the circumference of the circle, so it can be written as c divided by the period which is the time for one revolution. So the formula to compute for the speed in a circular path can be written as v equal to 2 pi r divided by t where v is the speed of the object which can be expressed in meters per second or centimeters per second phi is constant r is the radius of the circle and t is the time it takes for the object to travel once around the circle or that is one revolution period is also related to the frequency which is the number of revolutions in one second so period can be calculated using frequency and that is equal to 1 divided by the f or that is the reciprocal of the frequency. In that case, so f is the reciprocal of the period. So the unit for the frequency is revolution per second. So this is the number of revolutions in one second. In that case, 2 pi r over t can be computed also or written also as 2 pi r multiplied by the frequency because the period here is the reciprocal of the frequency. Example number one. The wheel of a car has a radius of 0 0.29 meters and it is being rotated at 830 revolutions per minute on a tar balancing machine. Determine the speed at which the outer edge of the wheel is moving. In this problem, the 0 0.29 meters is the radius, 830 revolutions per minute as the given frequency. In this problem, so we have to compute for the speed at which the outer edge of the wheel is moving. So we are looking for the value of V. For us to compute for V, we have to use uh, the equation V equal to 2 pi r divided by the period. It's in this case, the period is not given, but since the frequency is given, we can compute the period based on the given frequency. And that can be calculated using this equation where period is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. And that is 1 over 830 revolutions per minute equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 minute per revolution. So we have to convert minute uh, per revolution into seconds per revolution because we are looking for the period. So the period here is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 minute, which is equivalent to 0 0.072 seconds. So here's the period, and the radius is also given, so therefore we can solve now the speed. So speed is equal to 2 pi r divided by the period, substituting all the given, so that is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the radius, which is 0 0.29 meters, divided by the period, 0 0.072 seconds and that is equal to 25 meters per second another formula that you can use here is the formula using the frequency so that is 2 pi r multiplied by the frequency substituting the given so this is 2 pi multiplied by the radius 0 0.29 meters multiplied by the given frequency that is 830 revolutions per minute and we have to convert 
minute into second in one minute that is equivalent to 60 seconds so this is equal to two pi multiplied by 0.29 multiplied by 830 divided by 60 so the answer here is 25 meters per second or based on our calculator so this is 25.21 meters per second in uniform circular motion the speed is constant but the direction of the velocity vector is not constant in the drawing or in the figure, we can see that the acceleration here is towards the, the center. So acceleration here is not equal to zero, so since velocity is not constant. So based on the formula to compute for the acceleration, acceleration is final velocity minus the initial velocity over final time minus the initial time, or change in V over the change in time. So V is not equal to the V0, so therefore acceleration here is not zero. Any change in the velocity vector, even if it is only a change in direction, means an acceleration is occurring. And that acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. We can compute the acceleration of the object here in circular motion using this equation. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of the velocity divided by the radius. Centripetal means center pointing. An object is in uniform circular motion. At point O, it is released from its circular path. Does the object move along the straight path between O and A or along the circular arc between O and P? At moment of release, there will be no acceleration, thus no net force acting on the object. By Newton's first law, it will remain in its state of motion or constant speed along a straight line So the object will move along the straight path between O and A. We can see in the illustration the direction of acceleration and also the direction of the velocity of the object. It confirms the, our answer in which the object moves along the straight path between O and A. An example about centripetal acceleration. The bobsled rock contains turns with radii of 33 meters and 24 meters. Find the centripetal acceleration at each turn for a speed of 34 meters per second. Express our answers as multiples of g which is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. To compute for acceleration, we are using this equation. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of velocity divided by the radius. In the problem, the first radii is 33 meters, the second radii is 24 meters, while the speed is also given and that is equal to 34 meters per second. Using this equation, we just have to substitute all the given. V is equal to, on the first radii, V is 34 meters per second square divided by the first radii, which is 33 meters, and that is equal to 35 meters per second squared. Divide this by 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the value of the acceleration due to gravity. It will give the answer in terms of the multiples of g, which is equal to 3.6 g. For the second radii, which is 24 meters, acceleration is equal to 34 meters per second squared divided by 24 meters, and that is equal to 48 meters per second squared. And then again, dividing this by 9.8 meters per second squared, it will give 4.9 g. Second problem, a car travels at a constant speed around a circular track whose radius is 2.6 kilometers. The car goes once around the track in 360 seconds. What is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the car? 
to compute for the centripetal acceleration. This is the formula. So we have to identify the velocity and also the value of the R. So in the problem, so the R is given and that is equal to 2.6 kilometers. So R needs to be converted to meters and that is equal to 2.6 times 10 to the third meters. And also in the problem, uh, it says that the car goes once around the track in 360 seconds. So meaning the period is equal to 360 seconds. Again, the period is the time for one revolution. So we have to compute for the centrifugal acceleration of the car. The velocity in the problem is not given, so we have to compute first for the velocity. But since we have the, uh, the formula for velocity, which is for the speed, which is equal to 2 pi r divided by the period. So we just have to substitute this equation to the first equation for acceleration. So centripetal acceleration is equal to 2 pi r over t. Again, this is the, the value for the speed divided by the r, which is the radius. So this is equal to 4 pi squared r squared over period square divided by r. So we can delete one r. So the formula for acceleration can be calculated or this can be uh, compute using 4 pi squared r over period square. Let's substitute all the given. So we have 4 pi squared multiplied by r which is 2.6 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, or positive 3 meters over the square of the period and that is equal to 360 second square. This is equal to 4 pi squared multiplied by 2.6 raised to the third power divide by 360 square. So the acceleration here is equal to 0 0.79 meters per second squared. So you can actually uh, compute first for the velocity or speed of the, of the car. And then after that, you can actually plug in the answer in this equation. The aorta is a major artery rising upward from the left ventricle of the heart and carving down to carry blood to the abdomen and lower half of the body. The curved artery can be approximated as a semicircular arc whose diameter is 5 cm. If blood flows through the aortic arc at a speed of 0.32 meters per second, what is the magnitude in meters per second squared of the blood centripetal acceleration? The diameter is given, so that is equal to pi 0 0.0 centimeters. So meaning radius is half of the diameter, so this is equivalent to 2.5 centimeters. The speed is also given 0 0.32 meters per second. So since the speed is expressed in terms of meters per second, and then we are looking for the centripetal acceleration in terms of meters per second squared, we need to convert radius into meters. So the 2.5 centimeters is equal to 0 0.025 meters. Now we can compute the acceleration and that is equal to 2, uh, B squared over R. So B is 0 0.32 meters per second square over the radius which is 0 0.025 meters. So this is equal to 0.32 square divided by 0 0.025. This is equal to 4.096 meters per second squared. So this is the value of the acceleration or centripetal acceleration of the blood.
A centrifuge is a device in which a small container of materials rotated at a high speed on a circular path. Such a device is used in medical lab laboratories, for instance, to cause the more dense red blood cells to settle through the less dense blood serum and collect at the bottom of the container. Suppose the centripetal acceleration of the sample is 6.25 times 10 to the third times as large as the acceleration due to gravity, how many revolutions per minute is the sample making? If it is located at a radius of 5 centimeters from the axis of rotation. In a given, so we have 6.25 times 10 to the third times as large as the acceleration, and that is the value of the centripetal acceleration. 6.25 times 10 to the third times as large as the acceleration due to gravity. So we have to multiply this by the value of the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. This is equal to 61,250 meters per second squared. And then this is the value of the centripetal acceleration of the centrifuge. So the radius here is also given. Radius is 5 centimeters. Converting this to meters, this is equal to 0 0.05 meters. Now let us compute for the revolutions per minute, which is the frequency. The formula to compute for um, the frequency is um, based on the formula for the speed. So speed is equal to 2 pi r over period. And since uh, period is the reciprocal of the frequency, this can be calculated by this equation, 2 pi r multiplied by the frequency. So we have to substitute this in the formula for acceleration, which is uh, v squared over r. So substituting the value for v, so that's 2 pi r multiplied by f squared divided by r. Acceleration is equal to 4 pi squared, we can delete 1 r, that will be r multiplied by f squared. So this is the formula to compute for the acceleration. But the question is, what is the value of the frequency in terms of revolutions per minute? So f squared is equal to centripetal acceleration over 4 pi squared multiplied by r. So f is equal to the square root of Substituting the volume, centripetal acceleration is 61,250 meters per second squared over 4 pi squared multiplied by the, the radius, which is 0 0.05 meters. This is equal to 61,250 divided by 4 pi squared multiplied by 0 0.05 square of the answer square root of the answer this is equal to 176.15 revolutions per second so we have to convert revolutions per second into revolutions per minute and that is equal to 176.15 revolutions per second so we have 60 seconds in one minute. This is equivalent to multiply by 60, 10,569.13 revolutions per, per minute. If we're going to recall Newton's second law, an accelerating object must have a net force acting on it that points in the same direction as the acceleration. In the second loop motion, the net force is equal to mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of the object. In uniform circular motion, there must be a net force to produce the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration is actually caused by the centripetal force. So centripetal force is the force that keeps an object moving on a circular path. Its direction always points toward the center of the circle at any point along its circular motion. So since the direction of the centripetal acceleration is towards the center of the circle, the direction of 
capital force is also towards the center of the circle. So based on the formula for second law, centripetal force is equal to mass of the object multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. So based on this equation, so we can actually um, substitute here the volume for the centripetal acceleration. So this can be written as mass of the object multiplied by speed square over r. So this is the formula for the centripetal force. The model airplane has a mass of 0.90 kilograms and move at constant speed on a circle that is parallel to the ground. The path of the airplane and the guideline lie in the same horizontal plane because the weight of the plane is balanced by the leap generated by its wings. Find the tension in the 17 meters guideline for a speed of 19 meters per second. So the mass of the model airplane is already given and that is equal to 0 0.90 kilograms. We also have the given radius, 17 meters, and the speed of the airplane, model airplane, which is 19 meters per second. This problem follows the um, equilibrium in which if we're going to compute for the total force, the total force must be equal to zero. So this is under the law of inertia. So since this is at rest or this is moving in uniform motion, so we can say that the um, forces acting on the object are the following. First is the tension and then the second one is the centripetal force. So one is going to the right and then the other one is going to the left or they are moving in opposite direction. So if that is the case, so tension minus the centripetal force and that is equal to zero and based on this uh, equation tension is equal to the value of the centripetal force and since the value for the uh, the formula for centripetal force is mv squared so we can see the tension is equal to mv squared over r which is also the formula for the centripetal force Let's just um, substitute all the given. So the mass of the model airplane is 0 0.90 kilograms. The speed is 19 meters per second square divided by the radius of which is 17 meters. So the tension here is equal to 19 newtons. And again, the tension keeps the plane in a uniform circular motion. And then based on that, um, tension is equal to centripetal force. In a circus, a man hangs upside down from a trapeze, legs bent over and arms downward, holding his partner. Is it harder for the man to hold the partner when the partner hangs straight down and is stationary or when the partner is swinging through the straight down position? In the first condition, the partner is stationary and then the man supports partner's weight only. In the second condition, the partner is swinging through meaning this is under uniform circular motion. In a uniform circular motion, the man is experiencing centripetal acceleration, which has a given force of the so-called centripetal force. In the first condition, again, the, the man only supports the partner's weight. In the second condition, the man supports partner's weight and applies a centripetal force on partner to keep her in uniform circular motion. So the answer here is harder when partner is under the uniform circular motion. A sled with a mass of 25 kilograms rests on a horizontal sheet of essentially frictionless ice. It is attached by a 5 meter rope to a post set in the ice. Once given a push, the sled revolves uniformly in a circle around the post. If the sled makes 5 complete revolutions every minute, find the force exerted on it by the rope. The 25 kilograms is the mass of the sled, the 5 meters rope, which is attached to the post. This is the given radius. And once given a push, it will undergo uniform circular motion. If the sled makes 5 complete revolutions per minute, so 5 revolutions per minute, this is actually the value of the frequency. So define the force exerted on it by the rope. 
So there are forces acting on the slit. The first is the tension, and then the other one is the centripetal force. In this case, so since the, the sled is moving in uniform motion, so we can say that the tension is equal to the centripetal force. So the tension here is the force exerted on it by the rope. So to compute for the force, which is the tension, we are using the formula for centripetal force, and that is mv squared over r. Substituting the formula for the speed, m 2 phi r f squared over r. So the tension is equal to 4 phi squared m multiplied by r multiplied by f squared. So let us compute for the tension. So this is 4 phi squared multiplied by the mass which is 25 kilograms multiplied by the radius and the frequency which is expressed in revolutions per minute. So revolutions per minute, 5 revolutions per minute, convert this to seconds, 1 minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So the tension here is equal to 4 pi squared multiplied by 25 which is the mass of the sled multiplied by the radius multiplied by the frequency 5 revolutions per minute divided by 60 seconds this is equal to 411.23 newtons this is the the force exerted on it by the the rope When a car travels without skating around an unbound curve, the static frictional force between the tires and the road provides the centripetal force. The reliance on friction can be eliminated completely for a given speed. However, if the curve is banked at an angle relative to the horizontal, much in the same way that a plane is banked while making a turn. The figure shows uh, a car travels in a circle of radius r on a frictionless bound curve or bank road. The banking angle is theta, and the center of the circle is at C. The force acting on the core are its weight, which is mg, and the normal force, which is fn. A component fn sine theta of the normal force provides the centripetal force. The fn here can be resolved into fn cosine theta, which is the y component of the normal force, and f and sine theta, which is the, the x component of the normal force. So along the horizontal or x axis, the centripetal force is equal to f and sine theta, or the, uh, or the x component of the normal force, which is equal to mv squared over r. While along the vertical y or y axis, f and cosine theta, which is the uh, the y component of the normal force that is equal to the weight of the car. So in this case, so we have to compute for the angle and that can be computed by this equation. So fn sine theta which is equal to mv squared over r and that is to be divided by fn cosine theta equal to mg. So we can actually remove the fn here, delete the fn. Sine over cosine is equivalent to tangent. We can remove the n, so the formula will become b squared over rg. So for a given speed, the centripetal force needed for a turn of radius r can be obtained from the normal force by banking the turn at an angle theta independent of the mass of the vehicle. A speed that is too small for a given um, theta car would slide down a frictionless bump curve at a speed that is too large, a car would slide off the top. The turns at the Dayton International Speedway have a maximum radius of 360 meters and are steeply banked at 31 degrees. Suppose these turns were frictionless, at what speed would the cars have to travel around them? So the angle here is given which is 31 degrees while the maximum radius is equivalent to 316 meters. 
So we have to compute for the speed, and we can compute the speed based on the formula for the uh, bunker, which is tangent theta is equal to v squared over rg. So the v here is equal to the square root of rg multiplied by tangent theta. Substitute all the given, so r is equal to 360 meters multiplied by g, which is acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by tangent 31 degrees. So the speed here is equal to 43 meters per second or 96 miles per hour. Today, there are many satellites in orbit about the Earth. The ones in circular orbits are examples of uniform circular motion. Like a model airplane and a guideline, a satellite is kept on a circular path by a centripetal force. The gravitational pull of the Earth provides the centripetal force and acts like an invincible guideline for the satellite. There is only one speed that a satellite can have if the satellite is to remain in an orbit with a fixed radius. And please take note that we have two forces acting on the satellite. The first is the centripetal force and the other one is the gravitational force in which this can be computed using the formula under the law of gravitation g multiplied by the mass of the satellite multiplied by the mass of earth divided by the square of the distance between the two wherein centripetal force is equal to the mass of the satellite multiplied by the speed of the satellite over the the radius so combining the two, so since the centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force, Fc is equal to Gm, Me over R squared is, is equal to Mb squared over R. It will lead to the equation for the speed of the satellite, which is equal to the square root of G, which is constant, mass of Earth, which is also constant, divided by R. Determine the speed of the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting at a height of 598 kilometers above the Earth's surface. We have to compute here the speed of the satellite or the telescope given the height of the um, telescope above the Earth which is 598 kilometers. In this one we have to consider the, the radius of the Earth which is to be used in computing the distance between the satellite or the telescope from the center of the Earth. We have to use this equation to compute for the speed of the Hubble telescope and that is equal to V equal to the square root of G which is gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of Earth divided by the square of or the, the radius of the, uh, of the Earth plus the height of the telescope above the Earth's surface. So G is constant that is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared the mass of Earth is also constant, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms over the, the radius, which is the distance between the satellite or the telescope and the center of the Earth. So that is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, the radius of the Earth plus the height of the telescope above the Earth's surface, which is 598 times 10 to the third meters. So the speed of the telescope here is 7.56 times 10 to the third meters per second or 16,800 miles per hour. So the period of the satellite in circular orbit around the Earth can be computed using this equation. Period is equal to 2 phi r raised to 3 halves over the square root of GME. So the period here is 24 hours because the satellite is rotating around the Earth in 24 hours. And we can also use the GPS or the Global Positioning System to identify the location of the object inside the Earth or at the surface of the Earth. Apparent weightlessness and artificial gravity can be experienced by an astronaut inside satellites orbiting the Earth. Apparent weightlessness means zero apparent weight, which is similar to the case of the elevator during pre-fall. The figure below shows a person on a scale in a freely falling elevator and in a satellite in a circular orbit. Assume that when the person is standing stationary on the Earth, his weight is 800 newtons. In each case, what apparent weight is recorded by the scale? A. The scale in the elevator 
records 800 newtons, while that in the satellite records 0 newtons. B, the scale in the elevator records 0 newtons, while that in the satellite records 800 newtons. Or C, both scales record 0 newtons. Choice A, both person and elevator fall freely at the same rate. So they do not exert a force on each other. The scales should read 0 newtons. Choice B, both person and satellite experience centripetal acceleration at the same rate. So they do not exert a force on each other. The scales should read 0 newtons also. So the answer is, both scales record zero newtons at what speed must the surface of the space station move so that the astronaut experiences a push on his feet equal to his weight on earth the radius is 1700 meters centripetal force is equal to the weight so that is mv squared over r equal to mg in this equation we can cancel the m and we need to derive the formula for the speed. The speed is equal to the square root of rg. The r is the radius, while g is the acceleration with gravity. Substituting the values, v equal to the square root of 1,700 meters multiplied by 9,800 or 9.8 meters per second squared. v is equal to 129 meters per second.